But let me say to you tonight that whenever you are engaged in work that serves humanity and is for the building of humanity, it has dignity and it has worth. Rank and File Radio, a program about work, the labor movement, and sticking it to the man. Tune in Wednesday evenings, 5.30 to 6 p.m. on CFRC 101.9 FM. On Saturday, January 21st, 10,000 people gathered in London, Ontario's Victoria Park to show their support for CAW Local 27, representing the 500 locked-out workers at Electromotive Diesel. The target of the rally's anger was Caterpillar, the multinational giant demanding 50% wage cuts and an elimination of pensions from these workers. On New Year's Day, after the union delivered a 97% strike mandate, the company locked the gates of the locomotive factory. Hundreds arrived from around the province and even the United States on a fleet of 55 buses, some of them traveling overnight from as far away as Timmins, Sudbury, and Ottawa. I was able to make it back to the town I grew up in thanks to the organizing efforts of the Ottawa and Kingston District Labor Councils. After five hours of driving on the 401, we made it into London. We approached downtown via Hamilton Road, passing by a dense neighborhood of working-class brick homes built during a time when London, Ontario was a booming industrial city. I set about talking to people in the crowd to get their thoughts on the struggle against Caterpillar, the state of the labor movement, and what might be done to take on governments and corporations seeking to make the working population bear the brunt of paying the economic crisis. Here's what I found. Yeah, my name's uh, Hazel Pratt-Page. I'm Vice President for Gray County for the Gray Bruce Labor Council, which uh, takes in Owen Sound area. I'm a CAW member, but I work in healthcare, and my local's located in Kitchener, local 1106. Renford Thomas from the Ottawa District Labor Council. My name is uh, Jeremy Pooler. I'm from Local 222 in Oshawa. I work for General Motors. My name is Stan Vera. I'm the uh, Canadian Director for Amalgamated Transit Union. Okay, my, uh, my name is Ralph Kirstenberger. I'm President of Local 1005 United Steelworkers. That's the, the union that represents the, it used to be Stelco in Hamilton, now it's U.S. Steel. So we just got done with an 11-month lockout uh, where they were trying to get us to agree to smash up our pension plan. So they locked us out for 11 months. So the reason we're here is this is very similar to what Caterpillar wants to do here. It's a little bit more drastic here. They want the 50% pay cut, get rid of their pension, their benefits, and all that. So, And then if they don't agree, they lock them out. So this is like the latest flavor of the day, uh, you know, is make unreasonable demands and then uh, starve people out. I'm Anne Brunel, and I'm from Toronto. I'm with uh, Opsu. Uh, my name is Hella Little. I work for Ontario Nurses Association and I work out of the Windsor office and uh, even though nurses we represent public sector, we want to be here supporting the private sector and uh, those rich corporations and big CEOs keep getting more money on the backs of the workers so here for the brothers and sisters to say we support you and hope they can work things out. Yes, I'm Don Miner from Simcoe, Ontario. I belong to UFCW 175. Uh, we're here in support of our brothers and sisters in the lockout that they're going through. It's unfair, unjust, and not called for. Well, I'm here to support the uh, workers that are locked out and uh, uh, to fight for jobs to stay in Canada. I'm here to support the brothers and sisters and the plant that has been locked out. I figured if we don't support them, next day it will be us. to show support for the uh, the locked out employees at Caterpillar and they're they're getting run pretty hard by Caterpillar trying to cut their wages by more than half cut their pension benefits health benefits and uh, and they're they're playing pretty tough with them uh, and it, it, it's good to see workers in uh, in the rest of the from the rest of the part of the province uh, coming out to show their support and their contempt for unscrupulous companies that are doing treating Canadian workers this way. 
uh, here to support the EMD workers because it's really unfair what they're doing to them. Uh, nobody should have to live with half their wage. And uh, if they want to cut somebody's wages, they should be cutting the CEO's wages by half. See how they like it. I think it's ridiculous, and I think they should start pulling that out, exactly why they're giving certain people tax breaks. We as the common public don't know why certain companies are getting them, and they should set more standards, especially if companies here, and then going to bugger off back to the states. I think the government needs to look out for the people a little bit better more so than, than the overall corporations, you know, they need, uh, need to act in the best interest of the people, um, and I don't see that happening. Well, I think that's an agenda that is uh, attempting to restructure, uh, if you will, the, uh, the system, the capitalist system, in favor of the employers. The employers see uh, an, an opportunity to, um, to allow companies to restructure, to come in here and uh, cut workers' wages and close uh, large enterprises and push out unions and push us back. And uh, that's an agenda we have to fight against uh, in a united way, in a determined way, not in the way that we have been doing to, to this point. Well, besides rallies, I think this rally is just the start of it. The workers, especially at the uh, EMCD, the Electromotive Diesel, are going to need us out there every day to support them. We've got to just tell them that uh, we got to stand against the corporate agenda to say that they can't balance their books uh, on the backs of workers. And uh, they just can't be so greedy. That plant's putting out uh, $4 million a day in the diesel mo uh, engines they're producing. So uh, they're making plenty of money and just can't do it on the backs of us any longer. I think it's just about coming together and showing support and uh, educating our communities that it's it's a bit more than what's in the mainstream media about what's going on and uh, you know it's it's all of our jobs and it's jobs for our children and our grandchildren. What do you think organized labor needs to do for uh, this struggle to be won and those sorts of things to be won as well? Well, I think we'll uh, we have to uh, keep this going. You know, this, this protest going. Every uh, every injustice that occurs, we have to take a stand and fight them one by one if we have to. And uh, you know, we have to get after the government to uh, to put an end to it. Uh, you know, they're blaming us for the economic walls and uh, the whole the whole works. And it's it's not labor that caused it all. It's, it's time to go after the bankers and the uh, corporations who are making obscene profits. You know, the, the, uh, the profits are the highest that they've ever been, yet they're paying the lowest taxes ever, uh, which is it, it's ridiculous, you know, and, and it's all on the, the backs of the working person. Well, I mean, this is part of it. I mean, coming here is important. Uh, then more than that is... Uh, I mean, we ran up against it in our uh, 1005 uh, and U.S. Steel fight. Is uh, at the end, it's a political thing. See, it's uh, like for us, we had 11 months and uh, we had no leverage because the company was just shipping the steel in from the states. So here, uh, you know, whether they can make their uh, 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 locomotives somewhere else, satisfy their customers, and if the government allows it and everything is okay, well, then then it's a how do you change that situation? At the end of the day, when you you can't get anywhere with these people, they won't even talk to you, uh, except through public relations folks, the time comes to do something rather desperate. And uh, as I said, I'd certainly be in support of that. For sure. I think that's the way to go. Direct action and civil disobedience. That's what uh, Occupy brought and showed it works. Uh, we're believers in that. Uh, we think you'll get a lot farther than trying to work through the institutions that are set up by the very 1% that uh, own and control everything and that we're actually trying to uh, um, struggle with here. So, yeah, I think occupations of factories, occupations of schools, campuses, occupations of workplaces, occupations of public spaces, you're going to see a lot more of that. And I think labor is going to step up and become more militant. 
I think it's a new way of doing things, and uh, we need new ways of doing things because obviously the old ways haven't been getting the attention of the people that we need to get the attention of, which is the corporation saying that we're not going to take it. I, I'm just a little concerned that a lot of times the Occupy factories and plants is a, a quick, quick fix somewhere, and it's presented as, oh, if we do this, then things are going to change. Like we, uh, I use the example that uh, while well, they were saying uh, we should occupy Bay Street and Wall Street, uh, Bay Street and Wall Street had occupied Parliament and the White House. So that, like in my opinion, it's a it's a huge political issue. So in, uh, until I mean, as far as I see, until the workers decide, uh, you know, that they're going to have political power, we're we're stuck. Those are some of the voices from the London Day of Action on January 21st, organized by the Ontario Federation of Labour against Caterpillar's lockout of 500 workers at Electromotive Diesel. The rally was a success in terms of numbers. The stage was graced by a dozen or so speakers ranging from union leaders Sid Ryan and Ken Luenza to local activists from Occupy London, as well as London's Liberal Mayor Joe Fontana. From organized labor to Occupy to mainstream politicians, the rally exhibited the tensions found in the labor movement. Ken Luenza, president of the Canadian Auto Workers, delivered a speech infused with the language of Occupy. He didn't mince words when he named the enemy capital and its tendency to leave unemployment, poverty, and misery in its wake. Fontana likely won himself a degree of popular support in London by raging against the Prime Minister. But a few speakers later, it was an Occupy London activist declaring that Occupy had lost faith in the economic system as well as the political system, a sentiment reinforced by the fact that Mayor Joe Fontana was the first Canadian mayor to evict an Occupy encampment in the very same Victoria Park where the rally was held. How do Canadian workers mount a fight back against conglomerates like Caterpillar and governments handing out corporate tax breaks and siding against labour? Can labour reinvent itself? And how will the tensions between the varying wings of the working class movement be resolved? Whether they're the existing labour bureaucracy, the constant pull towards electoral politics, or the vibrant youth-led militancy of Occupy? It seems that the answer to these questions already exists among workers as these interviews reveal. It seems that in the wake of the rally, some workers are already finding new ways of protest. On January 24th, locked out electromotive workers and their supporters crashed a Conservative Party fundraiser for MP Susan Troop of London North Centre. A day later, members of Canadian Auto Workers Local 88 in Ingersoll blockaded a railway to stop a locomotive that was completed at EMD shortly before the lockout. Where labour goes from here is perhaps best answered by Peter Botch a member of QP from Mississauga. All organized labor has to start, first of all, uniting different unions together. We have to actually build action and flying squads in, in every local and every municipality that involves labor and our supporters everywhere. That's a start. We have to call more mass rallies, and we have to look at the kind of picket line support that uh, used to exist maybe in the 20s and 30s and has not existed for a long time. Cross picketing, um, of course secondary picketing and upping the ante in terms of uh, taking, on, taking on the bosses and making like we're actually a united movement that has some power instead of a, a group of individual unions.